Hi everyone, welcome to Introduction to C++. In this video, we will be using simple program to learn the basics of C++. Here's the programming problem that we will be solving while learning C++. The problem states, write a program that will ask the user's name and three test grades. Your program should average the test grades and print out the name of the user and the average test grades in two decimal points. The best approach to start solving programming challenges and problems is by thinking about it as a math problem like the way we did in grade school. Breaking down the problem into what will be the input and what will be the output is a good start. Let's break down this problem and write down what does the problem asking us to get as input and what is the problem asking us to print out as an output. In this case, the input is the name of the user, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, and the output is the name of the user and the grade average in two decimal points. In doing so, let's take a look at this program and go step by step through the code to learn it. We will start with including our preprocessor directives. And the reason this is called preprocessor directive is before our C++ program is compiled in a compiler, the source code in our library is processed by a program called preprocessor. Our preprocessor directives work like a library of functions that are already compiled and ready to be utilized by our program. In this program, we need three different preprocessor directives. To bring preprocessor directives to our program, we must use hashtag include. In this case, in, in the case of our program, we need iostream because we are using input and output in this program. We need iomanip, which, is, which stands for input output manipulation. And this is because we are using set precision to have two decimal points. We also are going to use string because we are getting the name of the user, which is a string. Next, we will use the standard version of namespace, which allows us to use cin and cout without having to put std colon colon next to every single input and output. Following, we have our main function followed by an open and close curly braces. The open and close curly braces signals the block statement where our actual program will be housed. This is where we write our program. In every program we write, we need to have our own programmer define variables, depending on the functions of our program, of course. In this case, since we are averaging three grades, we need to define three different variables, one for each input. Of course, we need to define a variable for output as well. In order for us to define a variable, we need to allocate memory for each variable. Memory allocation is nothing more than telling our memory what is the name of our variable and what type of a variable it is. We need to make sure we follow these rules when creating the name of our variables. Our programmer defined variable identifiers must follow these rules. It must begin with alphabetic character or an underscore, followed by alphabetic character, numeric, or underscore. Our alphabetic characters may be uppercase or lowercase. Following two table is showing us the examples of variable identifiers that are acceptable versus the ones that are not acceptable. Uh, on the left hand side, you see tax underscore return and tax capital uh, return. Those two are acceptable way of writing our identifiers. However, on the other side, we cannot be using any of those. For example, you're not going to be able to use a dollar sign, you cannot use numbers, and you cannot be using a dot or period um, inside of your variable identifiers. When it comes to the type of our variable or programmer defined identifiers, it can be a whole number, a decimal number, character, or a string. Depending on how big of a memory we need for each type of variable, we can choose from these lists. If you're dealing with whole numbers, then depending on the size of how big your number is, you can choose from the following whole number data type table. If you're using decimal numbers, then you will be able to use the decimal or floating point data types from the bottom table. 
Moreover, char is a data type for characters. It represents a single character and it is identified by single codes. The string is for string data type, which represents one or more sequence of characters and it is identified by double codes. You can check out these examples of each one of them. Note, for using string in your programs, you must include the string preprocessor directives or the hashtag include string that you saw in the program that we wrote. Please note that the term variable and programmer defined identifiers are used interchangeably in most textbooks, but they both mean the same. I try to use both of them in my videos to make sure that you all understand that really there is no difference between saying variable or programmer defined identifiers. One more thing that is very important in naming our variables or identifiers is that we need to make sure we are steering clear from the C++ keywords since they mean something to our compiler. As you move on, these keywords become so familiar to you that you'll end up knowing them by heart. But for time being, let's take a look at them. Please review these keywords. Remember, these words mean something to our compiler, and that's the reason we cannot use them as programmer-defined identifiers. Now that you know how to choose your identifiers and their types, let's look back at the definition of our variables that we used in the program that we were looking at earlier. If you look at it, now we have double, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3. Let's go ahead and change these doubles to int because I want to show you guys something at the end of the program. So over here, I just made them into an integer data type. Now we have int grade 1, 2, and 3. String, again, is for name, and that's the reason we have included the library string or included the preprocessor directive string up here. And double average, which is going to be where we're going to be saving the average of these grades. The C out statement in here is how we communicate to our user. Right now, we're asking the user to enter three separate grades. And the C in statement is when we are getting our keyboard ready to accept input from the user. So in this case, we're getting in the grade one, grade two, grade three. Please notice that all of our grade one, two, and three are the same exact ones that we have defined as far as their spelling goes. These languages are very case sensitive. Now, moving on, we are calculating the average now. One thing I want you guys to pay attention to is that we must get our input before we do our calculations. These are sequential programs, meaning that our compiler is going to start reading from top of the program to the bottom of the program. If we don't have the inputs, our programs are not going to be able to do any kind of computing. So in this case, we're going to say average is going to be equal to grade 1 plus 2 plus 3. And pay attention, all of our grades are the same exact spelling as what we have defined them up there in our program. So over here, now we're going to have our C out statements for um, communicating to the user that now we want your name. So we're going to say, what is your name? And then the user is going to input their name and see out statement now we want to print out the result of our program we're going to say see out and please pay attention to the terminology that i'm going to be using in here so we're going to say see out stream insertion operator string letter that would be our hello string insertion operator the identifier name that we have decolored up there string insertion operator string letter escape sequence, which is going to make sure that we're going to go to the next line. So our print statement is going to look pretty in our console. And then another stream insertion operator. Fixed set precision to. Now the fixed, the word fixed is really important in here. If we don't put that in there, the set precision that is set to two is going to count the digits from before the decimal points. So for example, if you have 22.36, it's going to show only 22. And then another stream insertion operator, and of course the average, which is going to be the result that we're going to be printing out. 
For those who can't see their output because their console closes before you get a chance to see your output, I have a little band-aid solution here for you. You can type system pause to temporarily pause your console before ending your program. However, this is just a temporary fix. If your console in Visual Studio is closing too fast, then there is a setting that you need to change. And I recommend you watch my other video on how to prevent your console from closing out in Visual Studio. I had this here because I wanted to show you guys the syntax of system pause. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. And now let's go ahead and run our program. So by running our program, we're going to see the console that's going to come up. It's going to ask us to input three different grades in here. So I'm going to 98 and I'm going to separate them by enter 96 and let's say 97. It's going to ask for my name. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in my name. And then it's going to give me the information. It's going to say, hello, Nina, and the output. This will conclude this session. I hope that you learned introduction to C++ and this program has helped you understand this material a little better.